Warning, spoilies ahead. You think price would be down? I think so. Like, I want for you the to right, reprise your role as Mr. Dark. For the right price, he might be down. Oh, oh I see what you did there. Like, clever, uh, clever. A play, a play on words, because his last name is Price, but it also uh, is... Uh, it's like what it would cost. Money. Yeah, it kind of yeah, yeah. spelled differently, but it's the same yeah. meaning. I, He's P-R-Y. Yeah. And, uh, I just thought of that just now. Dude, you're so clever. Off the cuff, you know? So I'm the clever. next. I'm the next, like, Howie Mandel, honestly. Right? Big, big Mandel fan here. All right. This is Two Guys, One Film. I am Dylan. And I'm Dane. And this, this uh, week, we watched uh, Something Wicked This Way Comes. And this is a Disney flick. And <laughs> through the whole thing, I kept I keep... saying to myself, this is a... This, this is, is a Disney movie. Yeah. And this is a, this is going on in a Disney movie. Anyway, uh, this came out April 29th, 1983. It's based on a novel by Ray Bradbury. I've never read anything by him, but apparently he does do creepy stories. The only thing I can remember I read was like uh, Fahrenheit 451. It was the only Ray I did Brad. not like that. No. And then I think there was another Ray, Ray Bradbury. Like I always thought, only thought he did like sci-fi. I didn't realize he did like weird shit like this. So. But yeah, the fantasy cool. stuff is cool. Um. Anyway, I guess uh, uh, in Greentown, we've got two boys, uh, Will Holloway and Jim Nightshade. Um, they're best friends and neighbors. It kind of reminded me of you and me, honestly. So yeah. Like, uh, I mean, we couldn't like hop out of each other's windows and walk over to the house, but it was, you like know. right across the street. Um. Anyway, there's there's weird people in town. They all have weird things that they're into, and the carnival comes in out of nowhere, pretty much. And it's October, and it's weird because they don't get carnivals in in October, and just a fall October. It's weird, and then weird stuff starts happening. I really did not know what to expect because you know this season we're doing a movie that the other person hasn't seen. So yeah, I saw like Disney production. I was like, okay, kind of kid friendly and it starts out slow and like it is kind of like more kids and i i hate child actors i just hate child actors um i know but then suddenly it hits and i'm like this isn't disney this is fucking yeah dark dude like it got i have to say i weird i fast. remember the uh the jason roberts dude and jonathan price but i cannot remember other stuff that i've seen them in yeah uh jonathan price is like probably one of my favorite actors that dude's fucking great like he's cool in this just like yeah he's it's it's not cheesy he just is a good villain just that i yeah dark and just the way he says mr. dark yeah it's because he doesn't even say mr sometimes he's like i yeah. am dark and i'm like yeah he's just dark you know and, then, and then I, it just i don't know with the whole like uh back stuff of like demons and stuff that gets mm -hmm. loosely tossed around you're like is he like like the devil he, what's going on what what year does this take place? I well, so I was wondering that too. Uh, let's see here. From what I gathered, it was, I mean, the book came out in the it looks like sixties. So it looks I'm like early nineteen hundreds, maybe like nineteen. But I mean, some of the technology. There's like electricity and cars. So yeah. maybe the. 30s I mean, it would have to be 40s. like after the twenties. Um, yeah. Um, and what's the um, kid that's like doing the narration? Yeah. And he does like the, oh, I remember my best friend. So once again, spoilers ahead. I thought the kid was going to like die in the movie, the best friend, because he says, yeah. I remember my best friend. It's like, oh, no, he's fine. And then like the same thing with the dad. Like they kept setting it up that the dad's going to like die of a heart attack or something. I'm like, oh, yeah. Here oh, the, by the way, heart. he's got a weak heart. Yeah. He does he's weak like adventure. I noticed fucking uh, Will is super mean about his friend's dad. Yeah. Just like, Shh, stop talking to me. He's not around. Just want you to chill out about it. He's not around. You know, I do just like, like how dude. <laughs> Will tries to like rub in all the cool presents he's going to get from his dad. He's like, he said he got me a parrot and some jewels and a sword and like yeah, all this stuff. Like, I'm like, yeah, rub it in. My dad is a librarian. He's right here. And you're like hurting our feelings of like, uh, okay. <laughs> well, I mean, he's just, Fuck you, you know. little kid. <laughs> well your dad's not even here yeah <laughs> the uh 
in the voiceover in the beginning when they're like describing some people in the town it's that old lady and they're like they say she used to be beautiful but look at her now i'm like that's fucking rude she's a right? lady like, man and um... i'm like <laughs> they're, they're, like rest of the movie there's a part where it's like, oh, she's dazed from looking in the mirrors. Like, I'd be too with a face like that. I'm like, fuck you, little kid. Ouch. Like, <laughs> Kids are cruel. I yeah, mean, they really are. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know. I guess it bounces off of them a little bit easier because, I mean, like, you know, Will's being an ass about <laughs> Jim's dad just not being being around. But, it, you know, just it doesn't really phase him all that much. Yeah, I, it's it's hard because, like, I, I really don't like it's hard to get good child actors in a movie. And this was not one of them. Like, I just, I can't, Jonathan Price, like, saved this movie for me. Like, oh, it was definitely. a great movie, but, like, when he came in, I'm like, I want more of him. Yes. he was just fucking good. But I like how they, like, get out of school, and they're running down the sidewalk, but they're, like, jumping over the bushes. I'm like, run down the sidewalk. You're, like, right yeah, next you, to it, dude. Yeah, like, what is going? <laughs> We're playing turtles. And, like, I, I mean, I'm going to... I'm I'm watching this and I'm thinking, man, they are just just fine with some like weird old guy like hanging mm-hmm. out outside their house, and they're mm-hmm. like, oh, let's go talk to him and tell him our full names. Yeah, he's selling lightning rods, and then uh, is your dad home? Totally. Here's some cash for a lightning rod. <laughs> that guy was cool. I like, though. I like I yeah, I like how guy. he tells his mom, oh, hey, we're buying a lightning rod. It was cool. I like uh, his mom is Diane Ladd, who is uh, uh, Laura Dern's mom. Oh. Yeah, and she kind of loosely plays kind of the same character from Wild at Heart, maybe not so extreme, where she's like courting another man and she's kind of like crazy and like neglectful of her child. Like this is a very toned down version of her Wild at Heart phase, you know. She's not rubbing lipstick all over her face in this one. Maybe she's, she's like, uh, is there a part where I get to neglect a kid? Like I'm good at that. Well, That's you, where I really shine. That's where my acting skills really shine. What was it? Oh yeah, there's some ham and peanut butter for you. It's like, oh, thanks like, for the dinner, mom. <laughs> ham and peanut I really, butter. I really, mm. that's a good. <laughs> those go together so well. Mm-hmm. I remember when I was a child, I used to eat a lot of ham and peanut butter oh, sandwiches. Yeah. Classic. <laughs> and I'm just imagining like a like a like a whole ham like leg mm-hmm. that he had to slice himself because of the. Year. <laughs> um, the guy who is like obsessed with women good god (laughs) he is like so at the carnival when he's getting his like hand read that dude is like so horny he's sweating yeah he's like sweating and shaking like (laughs) it's ridiculous and just the way he's talking to will's dad like oh i smell them coming in town oh you can smell that it's like a dude (laughs) what's that smell like Like, um you think you might not have a woman because you act like that I yeah. mean, it doesn't seem like there's a whole lot of people in this town as it is, but geez. <laughs> the one thing, like, it's here's it's a weird uh, story about this. It's not really weird. But, like, the Native American wooden statue outside of a cigar shop. Yeah. I saw a, like, it's not, what was the game show? It was, like, one of those old game shows, like, guess what I do or guess what it is. It's, like, it's like old figured out, like, way back in mm-hmm. the day. Yeah. And this guy his thing was like he carved native American statues outside of cigar shops. So I'm like, so that was a thing. Like did all cigar shops back in the day, just have like a wooden statue of a native American outside. I'm like, that's what does that have to do with cigar? I don't like, know. That's a good question. And I think I've seen a lot of, I know in a lot of movies I've seen it, but I mean, you know, I mean, I know we've got like cigar shops right here or, what are they called? Humidors. Yeah. I don't. I don't think. I don't know if they do that anymore. I did like the cool hand thing that always has a the flame cool. coming out of it, so you just like put it up to just it. pull it over. That would. I, I would assume that would cost quite a bit of money to run. Yeah. It's like gas. <laughs> need a constant supply of gas. Need to. I need a refill and, on my propane tank. And that guy was like. He was the greedy one, right? Or he's like, oh, yeah. I'm playing I'm playing the numbers. It's all. And then we're going to get good cigars. And, oh, oh, like, yeah, and they're going to be rolled on the on the thighs of women. women. Yeah. And I'm just like, what is the deal with these? Guys? I did like the, the setup of like everyone's, not vice, but more like weakness or desires and stuff like that. Like it was that yeah. cool setup in the movie. Like, oh, this guy is horny for women and this guy loves money and the one legged, one arm. I felt bad for that guy. A, yeah, he just wanted like, to be a football star. That's not greed, man. He just, I mean, 
he's athletic and it sucks. He lost his friggin' arm and leg. And he was still really good. He still yeah. he's through and he caught was that quick ball. on the on on that crutch. And he like when the hammer thing for the test of strength yeah. thing, I was like, damn boy. Like, dude, you are strong. The way that Dark hands out flyers. I have that in the down. background, just Sick. like just throwing them up in the air and they're all crumbled up. Like, oh, I fucking love Jonathan Price, dude. Like so oh, cool. That I was cannot... such a cool scene. Yeah. Just like and he's in the background, and it's great because you don't see him right away. Well, like when and he just goes like to like pick that... it up, you can kind of see him back there. Just yeah, but you don't see his. But face. then he turns around. Like that, like, yeah, yeah. And the kids are on the roof and just like randomly flies to them, and they're like, "Oh, a carnival! Let's go!" So, in the uh, middle of the night, it Jim's shows hate. up. Yeah, and that's weird too. When they're in the cemetery and those figures start cracking, like that, as a kid, that would have scared the shit out of me. Like, mm-hmm. there's no way I would have been like, "Let's go after the train now." Yeah. I would have been like, "Let's fucking go home, dude." <laughs> and for a carnival to just pop up. And then they just like go in there and they go in the first like trailer. They yeah, see it's like, already what up. the fuck is wrong with you kids? Yeah, no. seriously. And the the fortune lady, how you could tell she did not like Pam Greer. She did not want to like, how do you pet a tarantula? But you could tell she like did not. Yeah, she's so, like, like barely touched. Like, how the fuck yeah. do you pet a tarantula? You don't really. Yeah. I mean, I feel like we would have gotten the same effect with just yeah. the, she could have just held it. Oh, I like how. Instead of like the witching hour, three o'clock, the dad said it was the soul's midnight. I was like, that's pretty cool. That was cool, yeah. And also, I do have to agree, that dude is pretty old to be that kid's dad. I know. I'm just like, eh. I mean, how old were you when you decided to father kids? Like in your 40s? Like, what the hell, dude? I'd I do like, wonder, like, how old? But then, like, I'm, I'm jumping ahead here, you know, as we tend to do. Yeah. You know, the part where he's ripping out the book. Like, I was just about to book. say, like, 30s still as a time to start or what was it like 35 and i'm like that seems kind of old to me honestly because i mean why would you want to be like in your 60s when your kids graduate in high school i like the uh he says 32 uh the year of a man's prime so i guess we are in our prime now according to <sighs> dark Man, we are in our prime well how old is he sp- well he's he's like immortal because of his nice. uh his merry go mm-hmm. <laughs> sucking the souls of or the 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 bad parts of people and at the end when the dad's like be happy whoopee whoopee crane and i'm like that's not happy you're yelling yeah happy dude you, things you to me. it's very it's very like a sarcastic happy like you don't like, be happy be happy <laughs> your friend's dead but this is what they want whoopee whooping crane whoop whoop <laughs> <laughs> oh my god and uh, here's another scene where i was like this is a dis I'm watching Disney movie right now. I had to remind myself this is a Disney the exotic dancers part. Yeah. And how like I like how Will was like, Jim, you don't want to see this. I'm like, fuck you, dude. You don't know yes, what I want to see. <laughs> yeah, like, uh, I think I do want to see this. And then yeah, the, the barber dude just like suddenly is naked and being surrounded by women. Yeah. And what's going on with the crowd? Did they just disappear? Were they even there to begin with? Like <laughs> and how the kids saw the the sports guy go into the hall of mirrors and like glows when they go in and they're just like eh, why the- is that not the, not a thing anybody that goes in there the thing glows and they're just like eh, that's fine it's just the carnival well earlier and, they did the, the nobody, classic what they did the classic um the kid here jim hears the music he's like do you hear it and was like oh it must be the wind i'm like oh classic line must be the wind because the wind makes that kind of noise all the time yeah but yeah oh, man, the lights must be the wind, the wind. <laughs> yeah the the weird carnival people and i do like how pam greer just kept being every woman yeah there she's like the weird witch with a jewel so was she like the one like in that in frozen the ice? thing is that ice i think so because like that was when it like really got dark too it was like the dad is looking at a coffin so once again we're showing that he's old and he's gonna yeah. die suddenly turns into like a block of ice like it's encino man and you see a woman in there with the yeah, red but wing. i don't think he sees that i think the guy with the lightning rod sees the woman in there because before that it's just the casket and then he walks to the library doesn't he no it flashes to a block of ice with and he sees that ring and then he looks back at mr dark and he looks back it's a coffin again so it does it twice in the movie but yeah the lightning rod goes guy goes in there and suddenly he's captured like it's that. weird but then the uh but then the like the ring is left remember when he comes out of the library and there's nothing yeah. in there and the ring is just there in like a pile of ice glass yeah. i don't know <laughs> but then she has the ring for the rest of the movie yeah 
and I was trying to see, I didn't really notice, but if all the women in the tent had the same ring, but I couldn't, I couldn't see. I was be like, well, it'd be crazy if they did. <laughs> um, the Will guy says- that wins the money on the Ferris wheel mm-hmm. or the, when he goes on the Ferris, like, I love, like, I, these people are just so oblivious to some stuff because the Kruger guy or Cougar. I think it's Cougar, yeah. Is it Cougar? Yeah, and, yeah I, guess, Kruger. I, I just kept thinking of Sprainerd. Sprainerd. Sprainerd Kruger. Sprainerd Kruger. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when he tell and he even says the whole like, I rolled on the on the fat thighs of a you know yeah and there and I'm just like how do you how do you whoosh right over your head and you're just like. <laughs> I, 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 won on, I won on the two, and it's my lucky day. And now I get to see a, don't mind if I say, next to a pretty lady. And, <laughs> oh, and where the fuck does he go? Yeah, he's just they gone. go to the top and then gone. And then the guy just smokes his cigar. Mr. Cooper yeah. smokes his cigar. Like, Ugh. I'm like mm. <laughs> do you notice how like Will says ditch a lot through the movie? Like, you ditch me. Don't ditch me. I don't want to ditch you, dad. Like, he says that a lot. Yeah. Like, he's just really worried about being left behind or leaving people behind. And like how everyone goes after and blames Will. Did you notice that? Like when they go over to warn her with the Mr. Cougar is all like young. Mm-hmm. He, Mr. Cougar like throws the rock on the window and then the lady immediately blames Will and not Jim. Later when they're running out of the, or earlier, I guess, out of the place after they see that, I think it's later on, whatever, regardless. Um, they go across that guillotine and like it sh- comes down and it's will's head I'm yeah like, it's jim's there like, too poor, what the fuck is poor will? will he's like well, immediately I mean, targeted i because i don't know i uh dark seems to like him too i think, I think yeah just he's because like he knows to, like, that he's sort of like troubled and like a little bit more easy to manipulate and he doesn't really give a shit about will because he's kind of not smarter but not as like trying to be a being father able to, figure yeah he's yeah. not yeah and he has a father so i mean it's a little bit easier i guess like go after will because mm-hmm. he's he's more vulnerable i guess yeah. that's i guess that's the only way i could really look at it so you know screw will <laughs> yeah <laughs> jim's where it's at well it plus yeah. like dark figured out it's great it's gonna be what dark and nightshade or whatever nightshade. I'm like, nightshade. That's a cool combo. Yeah. i know it's a cool sounding like um sounds like a good combo uh dark's tattoo like when he yeah, pulls his sleeve check up, it out move like mm, it's moving it's like around. dude you got this like cool kaleidoscope tattoo how the hell did you do that yeah <laughs> just the way Again, he like looks at will too just the like or, a demon uh, or like you know, something you know yeah also that young young cougar is horrible and Creepy, scary dude. he's way more scary than the older version of him just the way he stands on the stoop just like staring that's when he him. comes out and like leans against the wall yeah like... also like is it what's up is this lady like how does she not recognize like a nephew like how and whose nephew comes like at night like that yeah and how does she like did they like trick her or something that, of like yeah. oh this is my nephew and i made cookies and it's like Ew. yeah and then you're just and if it's your nephew that's that young how are you fine with him just like running off yeah like in the night or does she not even remember him at that point like once he leaves the room she's like who was he yeah we came to warn you and then suddenly jim doesn't want to warn her it's like dude make up your fucking mind jim yeah what are you doing man like why are you telling her now because he could ah oh, yeah hold on nice to meet you kid yeah like, then yeah like how he's like oh you touched <laughs> yeah the uh um when they're getting chased by the green mist and they're at home i like how you could you could tell and this is the problem with child actors is like they filmed the tarantula scene later on because they're like more grown up and taller and like will's yeah. wig doesn't look right and like so it's like that's it's like the same thing with terminator 2 like edward furlong kept growing so there was that part where he's leaning on the car and they had to like literally dig a hole in the ground so he could be the same height that he was. He was like, that, that was tall. A, yeah, that was a weird scene where it's like, these kids look older. This is kind of yeah, like, and when they like even wake up and like weird. their screams, like they're yeah. I'm like, whoa, <gasps> you guys went through puberty. <laughs> and then they go back to dream. Normal. Yeah. That's how scary that dream was. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was gross though. Like the way they're like stepping on him and stuff. That would suck. Like, trying to hit him with a pillow. I do like Will just like sitting in the bed and like they're like underneath the sheets and stuff when he like crushes that one with his foot and when he like crushes that one on the door <laughs> yeah. yeah 
man yeah, and, and I, like his dad's regret story jesus dude and i oh i feel so what bad a for bummer. the bummer <laughs> we need to have this talk and it's like i could and that like what like dad doesn't teach like my dad didn't think it was right for boys to know how to swim what, what is that a woman's thing back in the day like what the hell what? like you like you everybody should... should know how to swim <laughs> yeah there's like that john wayne movie where he throws that kid in the river because he doesn't know how to swim and it's like well it's hilarious that'll teach him but what kind of dad's like <laughs> just floats <laughs> yeah <laughs> and i like how well... he's like mr nightshade saved you and he's like i'll never forgive myself for that or forgive him and it's like you should forgive him because if not you're like, son of yeah the dead. like like what's there to forgive? You would have rather had him die. <laughs> like what the hell, I'll never dude? forgive him. Like okay, and like I don't understand why you needed to have this conversation when he was that young. Yeah, like, he was that big. Of a, he must have been worried he was gonna die like soon. Yeah, there was. Yeah, there was that whole foreshadowing that the dad was gonna like croak yeah. in the movie, and he doesn't, which is which is cool. Like it, it, it's a surprise. But and like how the the parade was a great fucking scene. And how the I kids know. are hiding under the thing. There was a joke in Venture Brothers that I didn't know was a reference to this movie. And or ah. Dr. Orpheus is in the underworld and he's like looking for Hank and Dean's souls. And he goes, the first one is Dean, who's he- rust colored hair. And the second one is Hank, who's toe headed. And how Dark says like the same shit. Yeah. I was like, dude, that's from fucking, oh, I get this reference now. <laughs> I was like, fucking brilliant. And he starts crushing his hand and it's bleeding, you know. And then right then again, this is a Disney movie. He's bleeding yeah. out of his hands. I'm like, the he's so face. pissed that he's, yeah. Like, I. that's so cool, though, to me. It's like, he's just so mad that he's lying to him. Like, you. I know. They, I know. And then the walk names. away, just the death yeah. stare. Just and that's the, what's great. Like, the starts the parade, and then it's like the slowest walk ever. Just like. Ooh. And like, as he's walking by, just still like at him until he's like down the street. <laughs> the cool. One of the coolest things is you don't see it a lot in movies was the dad instantly gets it instantly believes the kids and is like on board and i even like the next scene when they're in the library he's like meet me in the library he's like we didn't think you'd believe us because we're kids he's like that's why i believe you it was like yeah thank like, you in any other nice. movie the dad would have been like no nope, you're an idiot stupid. that's dumb i don't believe in ghosts like, and stuff like that instantly covers for the kids and i love it i was like this dad is fucking dope. i like his drop of the cigar just yeah. so we can talk to him yeah but he also looks up the street to make sure you can't see him mm-hmm that dad was I love cool. that. They're like, it's not a parade. That's a search party. And there's like the two coffins and stuff. Yeah. I'm like, geez. <laughs> and everybody in town's like, oh, and they don't notice the the bearded ladies, the barbershop guy or the the yeah. Native Americans, the cigar shop guy. Like, I felt bad for the old lady, how she became young and then turned blind. I was like, yeah. dude. what do you get out of electrocuting a guy to figure out when the lightning's coming? Like, I feel like they could harness that electricity. I, I didn't. I didn't get what the lightning was for. Yeah, I don't. Because I know, like, the dad's doing like the his dad's journal, and how they'd come in and they'd always be followed by a large storm, but they don't really say why they needed the storm. Yeah. And I thought, why do you need lightning if you seem to already have the power of electricity really quickly? Just yeah. you know, you throw a switch and there it is. So, so does that mean the lightning rod guy's also immortal, and he always comes to town around that time? Because like maybe know. he seemed to know him. I don't. I don't know. I'm looking too far into it. It's, it's a Disney movie. My there's two of my favorite scenes in this movie. Both involve Jonathan Price. Was the library scene when he's like ripping up the books, and just like that speech, the way he's doing it. I was like, dude, fucking beautiful. I know, it was cool. And there's that part where he's like explaining what they are because his dad figures it out. And there was a weird line though. He's like, "We can smell disparate boys from miles away." And I'm like, "I know. Well, maybe we shouldn't say we smell boys." Like, <laughs> yeah, huh. huh? The other part, yeah, we we smell men who want to be younger and all that. That's fine. I just yeah. And how the kids are hiding on the shelves, how? and they didn't expect them. Like their bodies are hanging out the other side. Of course, Dark's gonna find them. There's just butts are hanging out. I know, um, like how, well, I mean, when he walks over to the case, you can't see him hanging out of there. Well, you can see the front, but he's like crawling up the back. So I feel like. And then the also, how does deep. he just, he's, he's, is he floating now at this point? <laughs> like he's just, or he's standing on the top thing, just like leaning over. <laughs> There's that part where he's like 
crawling up the shelf and there's a part where he rests his hand on a book. I'm like, you're yeah, going to pull like, yourself up by that book. That book's going to fly out, dude. I don't know. He seems like he's got he's got some sort of supernatural abilities, though. Yeah. Because he just kind of appears next to uh, what's his name's dad. Oh, I liked something that uh, Mr. Dark says in the library that butter are plain bread with pain. <laughs> like when he's just like talking about how what they do, I'm just like. And then when he like grabs his hand and his fucking and hand splits split. up, I was like, oh, <laughs> and it's like there's there's no sound or nothing. And the dad doesn't react that much. Yeah, it's just like, like a little split, like a tear. I'm like, oh, I'm like, oh, God, that would have I would have been like, oh, you. Oh, <laughs> that was gross. Like <laughs> or the uh, when they're leaving is like, give him a taste of death so he knows what it'll be like when it comes. I'm like, oh, dude, wow. <laughs> and my other favorite scene was the mirror scene and like what dark was saying and how it would like echo in this year and come out of this year and like oh that was so fucking cool like i just want that sound bite of just that scene of him just like yelling at this dude and being like look at this person's greed and this person That's well so that would be cool. cool it would be it was cool again you were right about him but he's pretty much the saving grace of this whole movie okay. you know, he just he out acts everybody <laughs> And it just, I don't know, it gives it that, like, I don't know, it makes it darker because he's, mm-hmm. you know. It's it's such a cool villain. Like, he's not going over the top Disney. He's just going, like, a, a creepy guy who is confident and knows what he wants to do. He's like, I know I can get away with this shit. Because I've been he doing knows- it for years, like, since the 1800s at least, so... I can walk through a town with a parade and two coffins and know nobody's going to give a shit and know what's going on. Yeah. I can bring my carnival to town in October and you guys aren't going to question it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> well, I mean, really? they kind of did, but then they just go anyway. Everybody just goes anyway. It was weird. I didn't understand. Maybe, I don't know. Once again, it's like a, a quick story. It's 83 or whatever it came out. There was like that whole kind of weird thing about Jim wanting to like be grown up because he didn't like being younger than will even though they were like born the same time or something like that i was like what's going yeah they were on? like born at the same time and like oh but i'm like one minute older than you but you're shorter than me and it's like uh... i don't know i he i don't know. i think he was just kind of somewhat of a confused kid considering he didn't have a dad and i think i don't know i think they were just trying to play off of that so i'm talking about i thought we were talking about jim's dad oh no yeah he's just probably some shit dad that like ran out just on his mom off, even though he saved will yeah, that's the same thing. He just happened to like, be there. Yeah, then drinking a stone, uh, was it a stone bottled whiskey or something like that? So it's like, so the dude was drunk and still can save your kid, and you can. Mm, wow. Well, yeah, yeah. I can feel that. <laughs> Sorry, I regret. Buddy. Yeah. <laughs> um, but I mean, he does. He does redeem himself at the end. He saves Jim. Yeah, and he learns. I like that. There's that cool lesson of he learns like it's cool to be old. It's yeah. It's fine. It's, it's part fine of life. Learn. Yeah. Yeah, and then Mr. Dark at the end, he is aged to death. Yeah, turns like into that, a skeleton. Like, I remember when I saw this as a kid, it, that that part kind of creeped me out. I was like, whoa, okay, that's happening. You know, and then it goes all the way with it, too. Like, at the end when it stops and he just like, <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah, it's fucking terrifying. And then, like, the little guy that picks him up. So it's like, yeah, like did he survive? Could we're going to get yeah, a sequel. Like, could he put him back on there and yeah. make it go reverse and but then it gets back. like sucked up in the tornado so i don't i don't yeah, know yeah and uh, also what you, happened you to see, those people yeah you see cougar running away like all these people running away did they get sucked up in the tornado or did they make it back to town yeah or do they get away with this scot-free and there's like well yeah. now we got to live normal lives yeah like how does that work do these people have souls were they also like partially demons or i think so because it seems like they all feed off of this somehow like i don't Maybe not in like a physical sense they feed off it because it, it almost reminded me of Dr. Sleep, which I only saw the movie. I didn't read the book because it's Stephen King. Well, actually, yeah, I think it's Stephen King or it's Joe Hill. One of the two. It doesn't matter. But like in the in the movie, there's like a gang of people who want to be immortal. So they like suck the life essence out of kids who have the, the shine. Mm-hmm. So it's like I was almost like wonder if it's like that where they like bring these people in, build them up and then just like suck the life out of them. I could see that, but yeah. then they, but then they have them walking around as like zombies, except for that one, like that one lady, because she just can't see, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. She doesn't really yeah. get a choice, because I mean, no one would recognize her anyway. Yes, come to me. 
Like she used to be just, just the quick flash. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blind. How instant, like she freaks out. I mean, I guess I probably would freak out too if I instantly. Yeah, I'd be blind. like all of just, me. I'm looking in the me. mirror. I can see myself. Things just I change to like a younger version of me, and then boom, yeah. blind. It was very like Twilight Zone. Yeah. Where it's like you can get your deepest desires, but at this cost, you know. What I thought was cool is like there wasn't a whole lot of music to the movie. Like not like there was parts where there was a score, mm-hmm. but other than that, it was just kind of noise and then a lot of like silence and stuff like that. So it kind of built some tension to it, but it was just kind of weird. I'm like, there's not a whole lot of like music in it. Yeah, you well, and everybody, it's it's quiet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like I'd turn, the, I'd crank this one up. Yeah, this one. Which I'm glad you had a copy of this because, like, this movie is hard to find. So people out there who want to watch it, like, uh, it is going to be hard to find. Like, yeah, good either luck. Buy a copy off Amazon. Like, a physical copy was the only other way I could find this. So, like, yeah, buy it that way or I don't know what else to say. I don't want to condone piracy, but, like, that might be your only option. Yeah, because this is... <sighs> Yeah, I had a friend look for it on Disney Plus. I'm like, yeah, I don't think you're gonna find this one on Disney Plus. Um, I, if anything, Disney's never isn't like trying to make it so everybody knows about this one, considering it how dark it is. And I think it was. I mean, it's not like a straight up horror or anything. Like, yeah, you're not gonna have a nightmare. Well, you might. I mean, it depends on. I guess it depends on who you are. I also don't know if it's because it's like a Ray Bradbury thing. So if they had to. Like his family owns the rights to it, so maybe Disney's just like, ah, fuck it, we don't even want to bother. Yeah, and it kind of makes me want to read the book because maybe some of the questions we've got unanswered they answer. Because you know, in a book, you know, and I mean, I'm sure Disney had, like, I know the guy who probably directed it, and I saw that I saw that Ray Bradbury actually wrote the screenplay too, which was cool. yeah, uh, Ray Bradbury screenplay, Ray Bradbury novel, uh, directed by Jack Clayton. And I feel like they probably had a vision and then Disney probably came along and was like, let's change it up, guys. Like, we don't want to make yeah, it. Dark. It's Disney, okay? We came up with Mickey Mouse. <laughs> release, release the Bradbury cut, bro. I like his, like, when he, like, made them go out of the tent, like, his, like, weird hand movements. <laughs> and then the barbershop pole was weird. How, like, Will kept touching it. And then how he does, like, the flickering of his hand to make it go away is very dramatic. Yeah, and then it just, but, like, goes off. Yeah. But then when they run back, they turn it back on. Did you yeah. notice that when they yeah. run up to it? Just and the dad had like Will had a harmonica suddenly, and the dad takes and starts playing it. I'm like, where the fuck did a harmonica come from? Was this what kids back in the 30s were like? I have a pocket that's harmonica. What, that's yeah, that's what you had in your pocket at all times. Like every every young every young boy back then had a harmonica. Well, it's a pretty it's a pretty open and shut movie. Yeah, it's not a. It doesn't need to. I don't know. Be anything more than it was, which was great. I like that. I like it yeah. when like I'm I'm for a cool twist in movies, mm-hmm. you know, if it if it's actually a twist and not, you know, like a the whole time, you know, hinting around that there might be a twist. Like yeah. it's cool when it just comes out of nowhere. But I mean, this one didn't have that and it doesn't need it because it's straightforward and they didn't like I they didn't like, you know, hold our hand through the whole movie cuz they didn't need to. You yeah, know, nothing didn't things that need to get over explained, I guess. Yeah. Well, As you knew what was going on. It's a spooky movie about a creepy carnival that comes to town and guys yeah. suck souls out of people, and there you go. The lightning rod thing was was weird. But it was that was a cool setup because he's like, Your house needs a lightning rod, and then sure as shit it does in the movie to like get rid of the the yeah, witch so, and the spiders. I was like, so this guy, I feel like that dude is immortal and like he is the good side of what the carnival is. Yeah, like, because, yeah, I guess, I guess that would be why he would be like getting interrogated to know when the lightning is going to strike because maybe he actually does, but he keeps like, he keeps just like talking about other stuff. Like, he won't Mm -hmm. tell him. It's like random stuff, too. It's just maybe your beautiful bride. (laughs) Lightning will make you hop. (laughs) He's just like, he's just such a creep, but it's cool. It works. He's He's a good good villain. I cannot state enough how much I love Jonathan Price. So maybe we should start a Jonathan Price fan club. I think we should. Like Brazil is one of my all time favorite movies. Oh, and he's... I have not seen that in so long. Yeah. God, that was that was cool. And I know I know you're not a Game of Thrones fan, but he is fucking great on that show as the High Sparrow. So fucking hmm. good. Yeah. 
I didn't know he was in that either. Yeah. Jonathan Price. There is I'm gonna no... have to find some more stuff with him in it because I, I really I didn't realize how much I appreciate his acting after one until I rewatched yeah. this. So I'm like, man, I'd love to see this guy in more stuff, but I want him to be like a bad guy. <laughs> yeah, he does a pretty good like villain. I know he plays one of the popes in that Netflix Pope show with him and like Anthony Hopkins or whatever. So I don't know. It's about a pope who gives a fuck about popes. The two popes. Yeah, that's what it's called. Twenty nineteen. Two popes, one one room. Oh man! So two two guys, one film reviews. Two popes, one room. That's a, that's the next one. Everybody yeah. get ready for two popes. I like I like what we're doing this season though. Of like a movie you haven't seen, a movie I haven't seen. It's it's cooler to. I don't know. Talk about, I guess, in a weird way. I don't know. Just a cool, fun well, idea. It's cool because I, yeah, just, yeah, just. Well, it's cool because I get to see stuff I've never seen. Yeah. And vice versa, right, starring Judge Reinhold and uh, Fred Savage. You've seen a lot of movies though, so it's kind of hard. Like yes. vice versa, starring Judge Reinhold and Fred Savage. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh. So. All in all, what kind of kind of rating would you give this movie? It's hard because I really like I really did enjoy this movie. It was it was really good. Like it's funny about this show. I thought we were gonna do like bad movies, but like so far I've like fucking I know. I mean like, I mean I know we've seen most of them, but I don't want to watch a bad movie at this point. Cause even Robo Vampire being a bad movie, I still enjoyed it. So I feel like I did too because we're not gonna <laughs> be like ridiculous butthole critics of like, well, I think it was lacking in context and blah blah blah. Like, well, like, that's not the reason, cool. like like we're not watching new movies and I mean, I could pick apart a new movie all day, yeah. but I, I don't really want to. It's more fun to go back and just enjoy it for what it is. So I would give this movie, I want to say, a seven and a half. And it would be seven, but Jonathan Price brought it up to a half because, oh, fucking Christ, I love this guy. I'd get, I'm going to give it an eight. I'm gonna give it an eight because it has it's got a special place for me considering it was like something I saw when I was in like middle school and it really stuck with me. There's just yeah. certain scenes, especially like the the tattoos on his hands and that whole scene where he uh, gets aged to death on the yeah. uh, merry-go-round. I don't know, just the fantasy aspect of it. Yeah, like, it was... it's just a cool story. It's a cool story. Well, I think that concludes two guys one film. I agree. Okay. As long as we're both in agreement, then I guess it's done. All right. Something something wicked this way comes. I guess two guys, one film is finally done. Oh, I don't know if that really was rhymed. A, something. The, the, I was, was like a. It was it was kind of a rhyme. Yeah. It's like a visual rhyme or something. Or... I mean, that's close enough. Who gives a shit? <laughs> <laughs>